Hi and welcome. Today I have the new Revision 3 Paris V5 Mega board with built-in IOSD. This is a revision of the original um, V5 board. Um, features wise they're pretty much the same so if you want to find out uh, what's what the V5 board is different to the V4 boards and pretty much every other board out there on the market, go watch that video. I'll put a link in the description below. But I'm just going to look at the differences between the old V5 and the Revision 3 version. Okay, the first thing you notice is that we've got the mounting holes back. One of the issues with the first release on the V5 was you had one, two, three, four, uh, 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 uh five holes. We used to have eight. And the five we were left weren't really lining up with the four holes. So what I would do is would use the two back holes in the front hole and do like a three mount, three pin mount. Uh, but now we've got the four, the two front holes back, if you like. We've got the hole that was there returned. So now we're back to the standard X pattern four-way mounting. If you're on a cross mount with your old board, you're going to have to swap, swap to an X mount, but that's no big deep, biggie. Um, but it's really cool that we've got the mountings back. As part of the re-laying out of the board, we've also moved the video connector out a little. There was an issue where the video connector, when you actually plugged it in, would hit the screw. Now the video connector is completely clear of this of this mounting point, so no more fiddly trying to work around this screw. Um, most of the rest of it stays the same, but a few cool differences. The USB has moved; it's not under here. It's now under the center where the old boards used to have it. So the USB is dead center now. It's a mini USB, and you get a lead with the Paris. You get lots of accessories with it, but most of that um, is the same. Um, so we've gone to the center USB as opposed to an offset one, which means we lost that hole, but we don't need that hole anymore. Um, the other cool change is this serial port here, Zeria Serial Zero, which typically you would use with the Bluetooth module. Um, it's been changed from an upright connector, you probably can't see it really, to a uh, right angle connector. So now, you plug the USB in from the front. Which means that when this is in the airframe, you'll be able to really easily unplug that anytime you want to connect to the USB. And when you take the USB back out, you'll be able to plug your Bluetooth straight back in from the front, rather than uh, on most of my airframes, if I've got to unplug the, the Bluetooth, I can do it with a, a pair of um, ply, little hemostats that I use. I can do it with, get it out with those, but I've got a lot of trouble getting it back in and typically have to pull the andrometer and stuff like that off the top. So, um, that being a front fit now, a right angle connector is really cool. Um, the IOSD remains the same. The port for the GPS remains the same. Pretty much the rest of it remains the same. The other big difference is that um, on the V, the original V5, we had two high voltage um, I2C connectors. Um, unfortunately, that was causing, depending on what was plugged in, how it was plugged in, where it was placed, and lots of other factors, it would sometimes cause, through an install error, I2C errors. And you can't fly with I2C errors. So um, the powers that be at Multiway decided to get rid of one of those connectors. So now we only have the one. It's labelled differently. It's no longer called um, HVI2C. There's a label next to it saying Andromeda V3. And I'm going to get to the Andromeda next and show you why that's really cool. You actually don't really need the second connector. And it was causing problems, so it's been dropped. And it's been dropped because there's a new product which has made this thing really cool. And that is this. The V3 Andromeda. The V3 
V3 R3. Don't know why it's R3, but anyway, probably to match the R3 on this. But this is now four, count them, four products in one. Okay. The Andromeda V2 was two products in one. Okay. So we had the LED ring, and we added to the LED ring, the original version one Andromeda was just the ring. On the version two, we added voltage regulation, so we had a 12 volt output for um, RF PV gear. So you powered your video transmitter and your video camera, 12 volt video camera, which all the carbon bird ones are by sheer coincidence, not. Um, you powered them off those regs. So this was not only the LED ring, but the power supply for your FPV gear. Well, we've still got the LED ring. We've still got the 12 volt regulator. Okay, cool, so there's our V2, but if we turn it over, we've got, these are RGB, color changing LEDs, um, and uh, which you only used to get as an extra on the Vampire Kit. Recently, uh, Multi-Wecopter released the RGB ring as a separate item, but here it is, now built into the Andromeda. So cool, you get the LED ring, which is very handy, and I'll do a separate video on the functions of the RGB ring. But, wait, there's more. There's also here, it's a bit hard to see, the OLED. So, we've got our good old-fashioned Andromeda LED ring. We've got our voltage regulator for our FPV gear and the output for that. We've got indicator LEDs that do some really cool stuff and we've got the OLED so you can actually see on here the status of the board whether you've got satellite locks how many satellites what your latitude and longitude is you can adjust your PIDs using the sticks on your radio and this display so basically by combining everything into this one device firstly it's one I2C connector and it's labelled on the board funnily enough Andromeda right, so all we have to do is plug that in and we get the light show and all of our data from the from the mega board on the OLED which by the way I haven't taken it off yet it's got a bit of protective, protective plastic over the top for shipping really cool um, we're also still using the ground connector um, to actually trigger the LEDs that are under the board themselves. So it all still works exactly the same way as if you had um, your Mega 5 with the old Andromeda yeah, and the LED ring and the OLED. But it's all built into one really neat, cool piece of gear. Very cool. One other thing I'll mention that I noticed is a big change now. It, they're probably, some of these changes probably have been rolling out over time, but with the mag sensor, the lead is comes pre-twisted. The original, when these first, the V5 first shipped, they were a very loose loom, and that was part of the reason we were seeing I2C errors, was this picking up um, noise. And creating errors so that's all very tightly wound and the GPS is also really tightly wound because even just putting the GPS wire near the mag wire was enough to cause errors so um, these twists in the wires should actually um, solve a lot of those problems and one thing I noticed I don't know whether it's a different run or what it is but the GPS now is black on top the old one was you could actually see the guts was unpainted so I don't know what that material is but obviously it's um, transparent to sats otherwise if you look at the two they're identical but um, it's black on top is that a cool thing yeah because when I stick it on top of my airframe it's gonna look nicer so um, I don't know whether that's a permanent feature or what but that's one thing that became really obvious with the version 5 so there it is the version 5 R3 Paris board 
with the V3 Andromeda board. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these to my Recon V3, and I'll come back and I'll do another video of them actually mounted up and show you um, what the RGB ring and the OLED and all that sort of stuff functionally does. But um, same price, I've noticed. So all these extra features, no extra cost on the V5. The Andromeda V3, yes, is more expensive than the V2 Andromeda. But if you actually add it up and look at the OLED ring, uh, the OLED, the RGB ring, and the Andromeda, it's actually quite cheap buying all three as one piece. This is actually, if you bought all the bits separately, this is actually considerably cheaper. So, um, typical multi-week hopper, they're always looking to, to add value to their gear as they go. Alright, I'm going to go away and install all this, and I'll come back and uh, do another video after I've done all that. I'll see you guys online.